we can create a new world for them. Yeah, so I had auditioned um, for this TV show for a different role, um, and I had got a call back and had been asked to sit and chat with uh, Todd Kessler, who is our incredible creator. Um, and he told me about Catherine and said that he would love for me to do a chemistry read with Ben um, to see kind of if this could be a nice fit. And I then had a FaceTime with Ben and got to chat with him and realized that, you know, working on a show that was going to be quite intense with someone like himself would be. I would be in safe hands and I would like really enjoy it. And so I was kind of like getting a little more excited and we got along so well. And then, yeah, I, I proceeded to have a couple of auditions, maybe um, two or three other, other things. And then I finally was told that I got the part and I was so thrilled. I, I, I just really fell in love with Catherine's story and I really felt, um, yeah, I really just didn't want to stop learning about her. I didn't want to stop uh, engrossing myself in her world. And so, yeah, and then, um, yeah, I was kind of thrilled, to be honest with you. And, and yeah, I got to do, got to do, yeah, I got to throw myself into her character and, and create the new look. Well, the good news for us was that uh, Todd wrote a great script. And when you write a great script, you tend to attract really good actors. But it started with his relationship with Ben Mendelsohn, that it started on Bloodline. And uh, Ben is a hell of an actor. And so then it became John Malkovich, another incredible actor. And so once you start that ball rolling, it starts happening. The hardest one for us, or I'll say the one we were most concerned about, was how do we find the French actress who can play Coco, because it's such an icon and she's so important to the story. Uh, we were really thankful that Juliette Binoche saw what we were trying to do and was able to bring, you know, a French sensibility to it, I think was really important in a way, uh, and different than other characters. And so when other actors start hearing about that, Maisie Williams is like, well, I want to do that. And, you know, and, and so, we were really fortunate in that uh, we had that rare project where the writer wrote great characters, so the actors were naturally going to want to do it, and then the actors joining us, want, other actors wanted to, they wanted to come and play too. Yeah, um, so I, I mostly just read as much as I could about her life. Um, I got to speak with the uh, people who work in the archive of Dior and um, they have collected so much information about his upbringing and his life and his family and I got to speak with um, Todd Kessler who had read so much of it and was just such a fountain of information about these people. And then I also read this incredible book called Miss Dior, which is by Justine Picardy and it explores Catherine's life in really rich detail. Um, and then, yeah, kind of with all of the all of that information and the incredible scripts, I just kind of moved to Paris and stayed in my apartment alone and did a lot of yoga and meditating and really just uh, immersed myself in her world. The development process this started in 1997. Uh, when I read an article about uh, Christian Dior launching, uh, the it was the 50th anniversary of Christian Dior launching his first collection in 1947. Uh, and that was the, as unknowingly, that was the start of it because I realized that while I knew the brand name Dior, I knew nothing of the person. And then in exploring the person, I realized uh, the time period and every experience that Dior went through uh, through the Nazi occupation, uh, four-year-long Nazi occupation of Paris, uh, deeply resonated with the life of a close friend of mine, which then inspired me to look even further into it. Um, and so then it was doing many years of research. I, I turned my attention to it 20 years later in, in uh, 2017 to begin the actual research of Dior, which then led to Coco Chanel because they were contemporaries and Balenciaga and Balmain and Lucien the Long and Catherine Dior. And each one of the people that Dior wrote about in his memoir, we then did specific research into their lives. 
I think whenever I got to work with Ben, um, we would always have a, a lot of fun with the takes, even if the scenes are kind of, um, yeah, more, more like shouting or whatever. There was a scene, um, there was a scene in, in the sixth or seventh episode uh, that we blocked and, and we really lit the whole of his apartment. So we had freedom to kind of move through and um, change our blocking uh, as much as, as we wanted. And um, it kind of felt like a piece of theater in a lot of ways. And that was like a really special moment where it felt like we were really living in that apartment and kind of like that cabin fever. And yeah, I, I really, I really loved that day. Um, and then more challenging days. Um, there were there were a lot. I think, uh, yeah, I think um, some of the most challenging parts are really just like little tiny environmental things. Like uh, sometimes being outside. I have green eyes. Being outside and shooting with a lot of sunshine um, can be really hard to just like keep your eyes open. So sometimes it's actually nothing to do with like the the content of the scene, but sometimes it can be the place. And so yeah, I think a lot of the time that I'm filming outside, I'm trying desperately not to squint so badly, but my eyes are really sensitive to the sun. And especially when I shaved my hair, there was like nothing to kind of um, shield my eyes from the sun. And I just felt like I had my eyes closed the whole time and we would keep having to do new takes with me like opening my eyes more. <laughs> One of the most remarkable days was very early on, we were able to film at the Sorbonne in Paris, the university on the same stage where Dior had spoken in 1955. Uh, and that was very early on in our production, but to be on that stage, it was actually something that really brought together all of the behind the scenes uh, artists uh, and, and the actors to recognize that we are doing something here. Our ambition is to do something extraordinary and to bring to the audience uh, an entertainment uh, and an experience to transport them into the world of 1940s and then 1950s Paris, uh, the likes of which they've never experienced. So that, that was really remarkable and then one of the, the challenges is to create that world uh, that fortunately at the Sorbonne, as an example, is in an interior that hasn't changed at all or hasn't changed much since Dior spoke. But the city of Paris, which we love and we wanted to feature, has changed tremendously uh, since uh, World War II and the no Nazis occupying it. And in order to seamlessly transport the audience into that experience, that took a lot of time and, and effort and attention to detail so that uh, mistakes wouldn't, wouldn't be made and, and uh, the audience would f feel the seamlessness in that, pun intended. I would say that it is uh, about uh, people who are facing an incredibly uh, challenging situation. It's not what you think it is. It's a, it's a real thriller. It's quite, uh, it's quite horrifying at times, but it's, uh, it's a fantastic series. I'm immensely proud of it. It's a roller coaster of emotions, full of contradictions, had a traumatic childhood, and events that really shaped her survivor uh, force. And uh, I learned with her every day a new thing. So it was never the same. It was always changing. Every day was a new, a new things to achieve, a new th mountain to climb. Oh my gosh, where to begin? I, I think it's really groundbreaking. I don't know if there's been a series like it yet about the story behind one of the two of the greatest couture houses in the world um, at a very crucial time between the two world wars. And I, I learned so much doing it. Now I have a totally different perspective on couture, and um, I think the stories are going to, they're riveting. And um, I was very, very honored to be a part of it, a little part of it, um, but I'm so excited for people to see it. Lucien Lelong was a uh, French uh, gentleman who had his own uh, design house, Maison Lelong. And uh, he was also the uh, head of the French haute couture syndicale, uh, most especially during the, the years of the occupation. 
um, and uh, a number of really great designers pass through the house of Lelong, Christian Dior, Balenciaga, Balmain, Givenchy, Pierre Cardin, many, many. And he was, uh, I think, not, not a designer of much talent, but a great recognizer and cultivator of talent. The music to me is so elegant and the arrangements are so elegant and I think there's a big connection there uh, with the show and the fashion of the show and like the really ornate arrangements in the music. Like, the music almost, not literally, but sounds very expensive. Like it, there's so much going on, and and so that's that's the the, the thread between the, those two, eh, pun intended, uh, there. But I, but for me, a lot of the music, less so about the fashion. Also, I really wanted to capture the, the real dissonance of the time, uh, and the invasion, and how these wartime songs were like both telling the truth and propaganda all at once. Filming in Paris was um, was an honor. It's a real honor to be there. It helped that we stayed there the whole time just to soak up the ambiance, etc. But yeah, it was wonderful. I'm eager to see the confrontation, even though we didn't have a lot of scenes together, uh, because there are contrasted lives. And, uh, you know, Dior is coming from a wealthy family, and Chanel comes from a very poor family. So it's interesting how they evolve, how they develop their being through that need of creating, need of meeting with artists, need of, you know, um, being designer the best they could. I'm excited for people to see Ben's work, which I've always thought was wonderful. And uh, I think he's such a unique actor and brings a lot of qualities that a lot of male actors either don't have or or wouldn't dream of doing. Just to see the world that they've never seen before. And the stories that they've never heard before. And what's behind the create the, you know, the the creation. And um, I mean what's behind Miss Dior, the perfume. You know, it's just really it's human, it's it's um, about things that shaped our world, of course, you know, between the two world wars, um, and I'm, I'm, I just think it's, I, I just think it's really extraordinary, and the fact that it was pulled off, amazing. Parisian couture could influence how thousands of ordinary women dream and live, but fashion needs a new leader. A figurehead. Monsieur Dior. I keep looking for a great collection to rise from the ashes of the war. Monsieur Dior, what do you desire? To design the most beautiful women's clothing that ever existed. Christian Dior ruined French couture, and I'm coming back to save it. For those of us who lived through the chaos of war, creation was survival. The legend of Coco Chanel. The people only knew. If I keep on giving them lips that can kill, they gonna have to come and arrest me. Chanel can be very treacherous. Oh, yes. My heart is... Are you happy with the revolution you started? There is the truth. My mind is but there is always another truth that lives behind it. No, she's not. She's not safe. Creation cannot stop the bullet, but creation is our way forward. We can create a new world for them.